Hi, welcome to Nalin Jana 3D Tutorials. Myself Nalin, I'm a 3D modeling and texturing artist and educator. I also teach on Udemy and Skillshare. If you want to buy my courses, please follow the link in the description. In this video, I'm going to talk about my 2018 UV toolkit. And this is the part 2 video of this series and this will be the end video as well. So in the first part, I have talked about lot of tools and techniques uh, inside UV editor and UV toolkit here and I'm going to talk about the rest of the tools and if you have not checked the part one yet please go and see that first so the goal of this class is to let you aware of different tools so that you can use the tools when you are unwrapping UVs so let's jump into it and let's start learning the UV toolkit So in the part one, I have talked about till here, this transform and I've talked about this one. So I'm going to start from tools and we're going to see this rotate. So let's see if you want to rotate any UV cell or multiple UV cells, some particular degrees, let's say you want to place this UV, not like this, uh, something like horizontally, you want to rotate it 90 degree, you can do it from here. Now it's set to 90 degree, there are some by default as well there if you click on this uh, arrow now if you click this you no know, right or left button it's going to rotate it if you click here it's clockwise it's anti-clockwise basically it's rotating 90 degree if let's say you ha you want to rotate 45 degree you need to set here you can uh, rotate 45 degree so you can also put you know any value here manually and you can again click to rotate that amount and there's a step snaps and that option is for again rotating with different you no know, angle snap now it's turned off if you go here and turn on again you can use your rotate tool with this snap you know step snaps and it's gonna rotate with that increment with that 15 degree in increment so let's turn off this one so you have two options to rotate particular degrees then the scale let's say you want to scale something to the twice size and you are very precise about that then you can come here and scale now it's set to two again we have two presets there but we can put any number there now if i click here now the two options are selected u and v if i click here it's going to scale it in u and v two okay so twice scale or I can again select multiple and I can scale those twice and again it has a step snaps option so we can scale with snapping so there is an option called prevent negative scale and this is a very cool option now it's turned on which I like to have let's say sometimes I want to straight those EVs these border EVs so when we unwrap the EVs in productions most of the time we try to straighten them so that it's easy to deal with the seams when you are texturing so if it's set to you no know, prevent negative scale turned on then I can just scale it to make it straight like this if it's turned off and you try to scale it you can see this scale can cross that side and it's very hard to make them straight so sometimes I use this to make it straight I want to have this you not know, turned on so then there is a flip option let, let me turn on this setting uvs let's say i want to overlap these two hands okay i want to overlap so that i i just have to texture one so these are basically same model so i can do one thing i can select one cell and if i want to make it overlap it's very hard to overlap because you know this side is this side here so in this case i'm going to flip it like this flip in u direction now i can put that on top of i have other tools to exactly take that to on top of that uv but sometimes you, you need to flip something in order to overlap that so you can flip in u you can flip in v okay you cannot flip in both at the same time you have to go one by one so this is flipping very very useful option so i like to use this option and this option most of the time then texel density again the most favorite option of mine texel density so let's go to check the checker here on this mesh 
if I click on this checker now you can see I cannot access that because of my screen space I can go to texture and turn on this checker map so here you can see the texture density is different means if you can see the scale of this checker here compared to the head is different here we are getting smaller checkers and here bigger that means the scale of the UVs are different so I can do one thing let's turn off this image uh, display image here so let's go to image and turn off display so that I don't want to see the checker here now if you see just overall see this head is too big compared to the body if I want to keep them same scale so I can copy one texel density let's say select the body UV click on this get to copy the texel density and then double click the head and set the texel density now you can see it became small there and now they are totally proportionately corrected so they are exactly same size in like 3d now you can see the checker size is also matching so this is a very very important option to you know use or to have so sometimes sometimes one hand is smaller than the other hand because the way we unwrap or unfold now i want to make them same scale so select any of the hand get the texel density then go to the other ev set the texel density now the both are exact same size okay so very very cool option and let's go to create now and this create section is all about mapping so different map types i'm not going to go deep into those i may do a class just about these things so let's see them briefly so automatic let's click on that so automatic is a mapping type it basically projects from six different angles like from top from bottom left right front back and with every projection it projects some faces and you can have a lot of you no know, projected face or evs here and with this technique you have to do a lot of work you have to see them you have to unfold them you have to cut somewhere so i don't prefer to use this technique most of the time i use my own other techniques so it's still there you can sometimes it's very useful so then the cylindrical mapping cylindrical mapping is again very very useful for cylindrical shapes such as hand a torso so i can select the hand let's say i can select this hand area let's say select these faces let me turn off this checker so that it's easy to see okay select these hand faces i can press shift and greater than or to like grow your selection like this let's say till here now i can take the cylindrical mapping as you can see cylindrical mapping comes vertically here straight up down so i need to rotate it to match the hand so let's click on this little t icon you can see here a red little t just click on that t for transform click that to get the transform now i can rotate the manipulator now you can see as i rotate the uvs is getting better and better now i got the better uv here then i can just you know unfold it by going to unfold and unfold i'm coming here a little later so i can unfold here select it and unfold it so it says i have some non-manifold geometry this issue may come sometimes and the solution is to you have to go to this mess and go to clean up and here you can clean up non-manifold geometry so click on non-manifold geometry clean up and then let's try so select the uv and unfold now you can see it's unfolded so again cylindrical mapping is very good for hands and legs most of the cylindrical shapes okay then planar mapping most of the time i use planar mapping for some part for the hand and leg i most of the time i use cylindrical mapping but for the face i tend to use planar mapping so i tend to select some of the face let's say let's go to front side angle let's say select this i'm not doing this thing here properly just to give you a little you no know, idea so select the face you no know, front face here 
and then I can take the planar mapping. Now I want to project it from Z axis so that it like project from this front to front angle. So Z axis for Z axis projection, you need to right click on this. If I hope over the mouse here, you can see there's a pop up here saying the MMB is project using Y axis, RMB is Z axis, shift left mouse for option. So with every option, you can see that if you hover over the mouse for a second. So here, if I right click, now you can see I projected that face from Z axis. If you left click, it's going to use the settings inside this planner settings. If I left click, it's going to project from no X axis. You can see from this angle from X axis. And because X axis is set here inside the option, if you hold shift and left click any of these options or any of these options, which has the option box, it's going to open it. Shift and left click to open the settings of any tool which has this options window. Here you can see this set to X. So that's why when you left click, it's going to use the settings. When you right click, it's always going to project from Z axis. And if you middle mouse click, it's going to project from Y axis. Very, very useful. You don't have to go to the settings and change the axis. You don't have to. So that's why I have set that default settings to X because I have the Z and Y set to uh, right and middle mouse. So in this case, let's right mouse. And this is my front. Then I can take this side faces and then I can project with the X axis like that. So planner is basically projecting from a single plane. Normal based, I don't use this too much. But again, this is something like it's always try to project from the average normal direction. If you select a face, it's going to project from its normal direction from this face normal direction. But I don't use this option too much. So I cannot talk about too much here. Then this spherical mapping again, this is better for spherical shapes such as head maybe. So again, if you click here, let's say select somewhere and click spherical and you can see instantly I got something here, some good looking things. And this is my spherical mapping projector. So yeah, then I can unfold it and see if it's working again that non manifold geometry. You can again click here always and fix. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's worked. Then you can see we quickly got the face done. And here we have some edges still need to suit. So you can select the edge. We can go to cut and sew. So you can again stitch together. And like this, again, you can select some UVs and unfold it again. Then the best plane. Best plane always uh, take the average of normal direction. So let's say you shows this front you know this top part of this palm and you click this best plane and it's always going to give you good result camera based again for camera based you need to set your camera this perspective camera so that it let's say for that hand i need to set the camera like this first then click on this camera based like this let's say if my camera is like this and I'm clicking on here, it's going to give me projecting from the camera. So here it's very important to set the camera angle. Just roughly then click here. Very good option. And counter stretch, I don't use that too much. So I'm not going to cover that here. Then let's go to cut and sew. I want to cut some UVs. Again, you can cut by using two things by using the cut tool here, uh, here cut tool and the cut option I want to cut from here select this as then click on cut now you can see if I go to UV cell this is a different cell now it cut there so I can use that or I can use the cut tool which is a kind of interactive tool you don't have to select the edge for this you can take the tool first it's like in taking a knife then cut an apple it's like that so take the tool which is the knife or cut tool then you can double click on an edge to cut the whole edge or you can just left mouse drag and slowly cut that to you know wherever you want like this a very interactive very you know 
good to see tool i love to see it when it's cutting this so let's go to create uv cell so this is something select this row and then hold shift and greater than to grow and now i want to make it a different cell so you can click on this cut uv cell and it's gonna cut you don't have to select the a's and you know cut so there are different ways to cut and different ways to create new cell okay so i'm not going to cover this one here so let's go to CU and CU tool. So CU is basically teaching it. So let's let's cut it first. So let's double click here to cut it. And then I can take the CU tool. So I can just hold drag and CU it like this. Or again I can select the edges first. And then click on CU to CU them both. Again I can use stitch together as well. Uh, when you stitch it's a little different than CU so let's let me show you the difference let's move them a little apart and now let's say I want to stitch them but I don't want to change that between UVs so if I CU them they both are going to be there they're not going to move and the selected CU edge is going to be moved to the center and stays there so with this technique you might get some uv stretching there so in these situations when my other uv cell is a little far away i would like to use this stitch together instead of cu so let's go to unfold now so whenever you take your mapping or any projection map you need to unfold it so that any overlapping things is going to unfolded so here you can see so in this 3d this face is not like this if you check the 3d face actual fa proportion of the face it's very clear square so here it's a very compressed square because of the you know projection angle we need to you know unfold this in order to correct these things so let's click on unfold first select the UV you can select the UV or you can select the cell doesn't matter select it then click on unfold now you can see it unfolded basically unfolded is like unfolding a paper a roll of paper and you are making that flat okay so this is unfold and there's optimize optimize is a little bit different thing although it's very hard to you know know the difference but uh, unfold means it sometimes uh, unfold the thing but it changes the face proportion but optimize try to get the face proportion or polygon proportion like the mesh so this is a very good practice first to unfold then optimize it so let's optimize it and now you can see there isn't any changes because the unfold is perfect here so there isn't any room for optimizing so let's see this one let's see and uh, you can see a little bit optimized there it was a little bit overall squeezed and let's say this one okay you can see a little bit changes and it's better to optimize after unwrapping or unfolding okay a little bit and there's the optimized tool as well you can take that tool and optimize things make sure you have selected that first ev and take the optimize tool and you can optimize it and it's going to basically get the same proportion here and as optimize tool you have the unfold tool as well so unfold along is a very good option let's scale this bit so i can unfold uvs with u direction or v direction sometimes we just want to unfold something in only u direction that time we are going to use this one unfold along u and click on unfold now it's going to only unfold that in u direction and sometimes we want to unfold in v direction so this is a very cool technique for that okay so let's see with this by default page let's see the straighten uv's uh, let's see i want to straight every horizontal edges here so i can go to here straighten uv's and choose the u1 click here and you are going to see every horizontal edges are straight now 
and if you want to straighten this vertical as well you can do that or you can do both of them at the same time so now you can see we have a square piece here almost square piece except this one so sometimes we want these things for easy texturing to deal with the seams easily and let's go see the straighten cell let's select one edge loop and click here now you can see this single edge the selected edge becomes totally straight and it unfolded according to that both side so now the cell is totally straight and unfolded properly and this is good for body and head the center edge should be straight so it's easy to texture then let's go to align and snap when you do the UV layout for production it's not just about unwrapping and putting the UV here inside this box it's about you know making a good layout which looks good which is using the full you know resolution here at least the maximum resolutions and everything should look professional it's not a wrong UV but it's not looking professional let's go to UV cell make this for UV cell and click on this right side option to make them bottom aligned so let's align those and now it's looking a little better and let's do the same thing with every piece here to the left select everything click on here to left align and do the same thing here the right align okay now you can see it went outside the box here 0 to 1 box and this is not good so we need to keep everything inside this 0 to 1 box so for that I might need to move it a little bit because it's always look for the highest vertex and everything will go to the right side to align that vertex for this reason I'm going to move this towards here and let's click on this right now you can see everything is well set there something here I'm not doing the actual layout just to show you this alignments then there are some placement options here let's say you want to place this to exact corner you can click on this this corner options to move that exact corner here you can see and to exact center you can see you can use these things when you are layouting the UVs to put them in particular space select it click on this center to move it to the center so like this so this is center left right up down like that and here is the snap together option very cool option here so let's see these two hands are you no know, identical and I'm going to overlap one hand on top of one another so that we are going to like save some space for other things and we are going to texture one hand and we'll get two hands textured so in this situation I can do one thing so as I know these are two identical UVs but I need to flip one in order to again set on top of another so let's select it and flip it first okay let's to flip here click on flip your direction I flip that now I'm going to put that exactly on top of this by using that tool snap together for this I need to use two EV I need to select two EV let's select this one this corner and this corner same EV okay and click on this snap together now you can see one moved to the other if you have multiple things and you want to stack on top of each other then you can use let's say we want to stack multiple things each other then we can use snap and stack and you can see it roughly stacked and this is not you know perfect and there are some options which I don't use much like match grid and this is to like move your vertices to the closest grid points here I don't use that too much match UVs this is a very good option sometimes let's say these are two identical UVs but for any reason or any unfold there are few UVs which is a little bit off let's say but these are two identical so let's first move them or snap them by this option now then let's say snap these two UVs as I so let's select both of them and click on this match UV and it's going to again snap or align those things let's do the same thing here like this so you can select two EVs and then you can use this to you no know, match them then you can move them overall then normalize normalize is something to 
to make straight square uvs and this is very useful for some like mechanical things or some wires where we want to put some repeated texture for that it's very useful you can again select it and you can normalize it let's click and when you normalize it it's going to actually scale to the full 0 to 1 space you can see this is the by default settings and if you right click on this it's going to cut every faces to different UV cell and it's going to make that square so let's right click on this to now you can see if I try to move it it's just selected few what few UV so it's not coming so let's go to the cell hold control and click on this cell to convert that selection to cell so that I can move the whole thing there let me drag here to select the whole cell there you can see now they are like on top of each other I can go and unstack them by just going here to the last section here there's an option called unstack cells let's unstack you can see every faces of that initial hand now is a very good perfect square this technique is very useful for some repeatable texture thing let's say it's a wall it's a road it's a ground which we are going to use a tileable texture and we can do this and then we can sew these things and make it a totally square piece and we can put that we can again select it and normalize it the normal normalize to make it exact you know square here then we can use that to tileable texture very very useful option then let's see this arrange and layout option here let's call up these things and orient cell is to orient the cells if let's say this cell is vertical but it's not 100% vertical we can select it then click on orient cell it's going to roughly orient that and then let's say this one if you orient now it's going to make it horizontal because it looks like it almost horizontal with a little bit angle then let's see these things we can make multiple cells straight now you can see one cell got vertical one is horizontal then we can use the like rotate 90 degree thing here then let's orient to edge which is a better option i think orient to edge is something let's say this hand or this leg is like oriented like this but i want to make this edge let's say this edge would be the straight edge so select that single edge and click on this orient to edge now that edge is going to vertical and the whole UV cell is rotated according to that. Now you can see the overall UV cell got rotated. Stack cell already we have seen that. So you can stack multiple things on top of each other. You can unstack that as well. And stack and orient is something again doing the both things stacking and orienting. Let's say stack and orient. So it's going to stack and try to orient everything in one direction or according to their initial angle and stack similar is going to stack if if they are similar it's going to stack so let's select it and stack similar now you can see now they are 100 percent stacked on top of each other if they are 100 percent symmetrical or identical this is the tool actually you are going to use stack similar okay select both of them stack similar then you can put them anyway and anytime if you want to unstack them there is the option for unstack cells okay like this gather cells is a very good option to gather outside uv cells as well so let's see to gather everything inside this 0 to 1 space select everything click on this okay and it can gather on top of uvs so you have to like adjust those so randomize cells is to randomize your look and position of the layout you can click here and it's gonna randomize the position of the uv cells okay sometimes i use but most of the time i don't use this and again measure is to measure the actual size you can measure uvs and let's click here you can measure their pixels there and the last option layout uh, layout is a very good option to put everything inside this box and it's not gonna overlap like this gathered cells it's going to uh, put them uniquely and it can scale if you like set the settings there 
and now everything is inside and with proper scaling but i am losing lot of space so in production we use this as a starting point but we don't use this as the end like just click and this is the uv we just use it as a starting point then we are going to see how we can use this empty space and how we are going to keep these uvs in different ways so that we can use maximum uv space here so this is it for this class i hope you like this class and this is the end of this uv toolkit in my 2018 video if you like this please subscribe my channel and if you want to check my courses please follow the links in the description so you are watching knowledge 3d tutorials i'll see you in the next video till then Take care and bye.